always liked the quiet. My initial impression of Death Stranding wasn't exactly favourable. The years of promise and secrecy surrounding the game had me expecting something else entirely. Some kind of sensational breaking point for game design that would redefine it for the next few years. All coated in the madness I'd come to expect from the mind of Hideo Kojima and his stalwart team. But the game I wound up popping into my PlayStation 4 on that cold November day instead felt like a plodding and meaningless endeavour from an auteur who had bought into his own hype. In some respects, I was right. For much of its playtime, Death Stranding is a dull, often boring experience. But it's through this mundanity, mundanity that Death Stranding eventually blossoms and flourishes into one of the most meaningful, perspective-shifting gameplay experiences I've had yet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your favourite magical boy, Bamboo Fighting, welcoming you to Meaning in the Mundane, Death Stranding. Death Stranding begins as a cyberpunk postman path simulator. You are popped into the shoes of Sam Porter Bridges, the courier tasked with reconnecting the separated citizens and cities of America or the porter tasked with bridging them, if you will. Other super creatively named characters include Mama, a mother, Heartman, a man with a dysfunctional heart, and Die Hard Man, a man who finds it really hard to die. I'm honestly surprised we didn't get a Mega Man style boss selection screen. I found these opening hours particularly monotonous, Wandering the Icelandic, I mean American, wasteland, simply delivering packages to characters played by Kojima's friends in a display of some kind of not-so-humble brag. I did have the occasional encounter with the ghostly BT enemies, but they're rendered pretty trivial very quickly, ending up about as effective as a BT broadband engineer. There's one for my UK viewers. It was all very simple. Get package, walk a bit, build a path through rough terrain, and deliver package. Sure, there's hilly scenery to take in, and the occasional burst of dreary song, but I was hardly looking for the sound of bloody music. I distinctly remember sitting in my busted up chair ten hours in, aghast at what I was experiencing. The Kojima madness I'd expected was replaced with cutscenes that took its navel-gazing narrative far too seriously, the groundbreaking gameplay revealing itself as little more than a walking simulator with ladders. And then, slowly and steadily, the game began to blossom, winning me over as it did so. Those paths I was making through rough terrain, the ladders across streams, the rappel lines down steep hills, the lockers dotted throughout the map, were soon joined by bridges and roads, and not just my own. As Sam reconnected America, I connected with other players, oft taken paths through rocky land flattened by dozens of feet, bridges waiting for my contribution to reach across ravines, and roads that we all worked together to build, separately but united in our goal of knitting the wasteland back together. Ironically, this made the game even more dull in some ways. Rocky paths that took 20 minutes and some effort to get through were replaced by a two minute drive, and arduous mountain climbs were transformed into a quick jaunt on a zip line. But this was part of what made me begin to appreciate what the game was doing, and the larger message being delivered through its simple, but incredibly effective gameplay. Death Stranding is a lot of things, but I mainly saw it as a time lapse of human and societal development. Paths forged by Sam and the players becoming bridges and roads to connect America, mirroring our own species' slow connection of the entire world, where boats and bridges pave the way for roads and aircraft, eventually facilitating the development of a net with strands connecting every corner of our world, the internet. And if I can get real personal and real pretentious for just a minute, this all made me reevaluate parts of my own life. I've had a few jobs in my time, but like many of us, my work life has been marred by a sense of listlessness a lack of purpose or meaning to what I viewed as dead-end, pointless jobs that provided little meaningful contribution to the world. 
The absolute lowest point of this was when I worked in a factory, spending eight hours day after day sat on my fat ass assembling electrical discharges for aircraft. I despised those three years, and after escaping it, I vowed to never return to that line of work. However, Death Stranding gave me new context for that job, and every other since, shifting it into a greater frame of reference that allows me to see these wastes of time in a new light. At first glance, Sam Porter Bridges suffers from a similar malady. A postman is hardly the most glamorous of jobs, just shifting packages from one location to the next to get paid, but the new equipment that led to, the roads that forged, and the escalation in the available technology forced me to reevaluate not only Sam's position in the world, but my own. Much like Sam's deliveries were a tiny step toward reconnecting America, those discharges I spent three years building were a tiny, minuscule step in building the aircraft that connect our world. And that's what Death Stranding showed me with its hopeful message. That all of us, no matter how boring our jobs, connect the world and contribute to its development in some tiny, seemingly insignificant way, and missing even a single one of those knots sets us back irreparably. And I think that's what Kojima and company's goal was with Death Stranding, to show us through its unique, unprecedented gameplay, through the small ways in which we're all connected, we can find a little bit of meaning in the mundane. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out my video. This one was a little short, but there are hundreds of reviews already, so I thought my particular perspective on this one area of the game would be way more interesting, and probably more valuable. If you do want to check out a review, I recommend Tark's Gauntlets, who took away a few different and interesting things from the game than I did. If you enjoyed my video, please consider checking out more and maybe giving me a subscribe. I'm also going to open up a Discord as I try to grow something of a community for this channel, which I'll link in the description. So if you fancy coming and having a chat about video games, anime, and anything else, I'll be there waiting. See you next time, Space Cowboy! <laughs>